2015 requires that the department, excuse me, the Oregon Department of Transportation Driver and Motor Vehicle Division issue a driver's license, instructor permit, or identification card to applicants without requiring proof of lawful status in the United States. Applicants of a standard driver's license and instructor permit will still have to pass the test, pay the required fees for the document that they are seeking, present proof of identity, age, and Oregon residency, as Representative Hernandez has mentioned. Colleagues, the issue of our neighbors, family members, and community members not being able to drive because they can't access a driver's license is real. I want to remind us that, this, that segments of our population who would benefit from this law would be our elderly, homeless and houseless folks, domestic violence victims, and victims of natural disasters, immigrants without legal status, low-income individuals, those born in other states, and other Oregonians who have difficulty accessing their birth certificate and other paperwork necessary to prove citizenship status. Currently, for segments of our population, the lack of driver's license has impacted their everyday lives in ways that has created a lot of hardship, especially on things we take for granted. I have had many conversations. I have received letters and phone calls, emails, as well as office visits from our constituents representing many of our districts who have shared their stories with me. I learned that many of our constituents whose license expired could not get new jobs after getting laid off from temporary or seasonal work, while others lost their livelihood because of unreliable transportation, especially those who live in our rural communities where there is limited or no public transportation at all, which, as you know, impacts our overall economy. Small businesses have also been impacted. For those who served with me in, the fir in my first term, know that I started Small Business Saturdays in my district to support the small businesses in the city of Woodburn. Some of those small businesses, sp business owners who I spoke with firmly believe that, that if people could drive again, their small businesses would be thriving. During a student success community meeting, we learned that parents who don't have a driver's license not only can't take their children to school, but also can't get involved as volunteers, let alone attend field trips with their children. Not having a driver's license means that people cannot take themselves or their kids to the doctor's office or get medication they need at the pharmacy. Colleagues, imagine the pain and frustration that parents must feel when they can't do that simple task. A simple task like going to the grocery store to buy baby formula, diapers, over-the-counter medication. While this has been a challenge, has been challenging for many parents, they are not deterred. They have taken to walking for miles to get to work or to that grocery store on shoulderless, dim roads to make sure that their children have their basic needs. In one office visit, I learned about a mixed family status who struggles. I had a brave young woman who shared with me how scared she was for her mother and her family because her mother did not have a driver's license. She expressed that as the oldest among her siblings and the only one who could drive, she had to take it upon herself to be the main source of transportation for her entire family. However, she is now torn because she has decided to enlist and serve our country. Excuse me, Representative. Representative Reardon yields his time. Please continue. Thank you. She fears that after moving away to boot camp, her mother could be detained or arrested because her mother would have to take over as the family driver. With tears in her eyes, she expressed the growing anxiety 
that grew within her. Her voice cracking like mine and tears running down her face like mine. She ever so eloquently expressed her biggest fear that her mother might not come home to her siblings and family after a simple trip to the grocery store. I also had a visit from regular elementary school where several fourth grade students read me a letter that they drafted in Spanish telling me that queremos licencias de conducir para todos, un camino a la ciudadanía para todos, y un aumento de salario mínimo. Translated, they said, <coughs> They want a driver's license for everyone, a pathway to citizenship, and an increase in minimum wage. Further, a few months ago, a student from Grant High School sent all of us the following message. Quote, when kids not much older than I have to drive their parents to work, not because their parents are unable to drive themselves, but because it will put them at risk of a fine or worse, you know there's something wrong with the system. Colleagues, this grown-up issue has filtered down to our kids, an issue that I hope today we pass so that our kids can go back to being kids and deal with school issues, hanging out with kids and preparing for college. I am proud of the work our coalition has done to educate and work in partnership. We have the support of more than 100 business businesses, labor, and community groups from across the state of Oregon. Further, this past weekend, as I, as I gave remarks to the Lane Community College graduating class of 2019, I was presented with resolution number 629 on behalf of Lane Community College board members, which states the college's support for House Bill 2015, the Equal Access to Roads Act. Thank you, Lane Community College, for standing with us and supporting this very important issue.